the sixth video in a big series all about mapping out and practicing our melodic arpeggio guitar shapes all over the guitar for various chord types. Each video is featuring a different chord type. In this video, we are doing the half diminished chord, also called the minor seven flat five chord. So we're gonna go over five positions, five melodic arpeggio guitar shapes to play just the chord tones only of the half diminished chord. This is necessary vocabulary information, just crucial stuff to be able to do if we want to improvise in a jazz context. It's also just great for ear training, just amazing technique practice, great for composing melodies over chord changes, and it's good for our ears so we can kind of hear this chord type broken up as we're practicing it. We start to recognize that over time a little bit too. I have a free download if you want to follow along with any of the chord types in this whole series. It's my chord tone vocabulary pack. It has 12 chord types, five positions and shapes of each chord types, all the arpeggios. Just use the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones. In this video, I'm just gonna demonstrate and go up and down each of the five shapes of the half diminished chord in the way that we want to, at the very basic level, be able to play these. Then I'm gonna go through and explain what fingerings I recommend to be able to do that. And lastly, we're just gonna improvise with the chord a little bit off of each of the five shapes because that's what we wanna start doing after we just have mapped it out and can play it up and down. It's gonna be fun, let's do it. I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com. On this channel, I teach on a wide variety of guitar topics, all designed to help us gain more creative control over music so we can express ourselves more freely. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and hit the bell. Okay, so for this whole series, we're doing five steps to improvise comfortably on any chord type. We're doing half diminished here, five different arpeggio shapes, four half diminished chord and five steps on each of them to get you comfortably improvising. And the main thing is that we just need to know the chord tones crazy well. We just need to have that home base of where the actual notes of the chord are so solidified that we can then play around those comfortably to make all kinds of melodies. So the first step we always wanna do is just map out the straight up the chord tones up and down, playing from the root to the root, repeating the roots, but playing all the notes also, but you repeat and pause on any root and you start on the root and you end on the root, so. Okay, so that's all that is. We do that on all five of the sh positions and chord tone forms. So that's the C half diminished or C minor seven flat five. Okay, we're gonna use just third position fingers here. Uh, finger one, four, two, one, and then reach over, shift over, don't reach actually, you don't wanna cause tension there, just kinda of shift over, hop over to second finger, and now we're in fourth position. You're gonna do second finger first, fourth, third, and then shift back to third position. So there's just one little position shift there and everything should be very ergonomic just with that little position shift. I love the sound of this chord so much. Um, let's do the step two now with all of these arpeggio shapes in this whole series. We wanna do step two to get it down even further. So we're not just trying to improvise over it and then doing this. Right, it can sound good to go up and down the arpeggio, but we wanna have really a lot of control over our options on it and be able to play something interesting, even just with chord tones. So we wanna do a melodic pattern, at least one. And the one I'm recommending is this, where we just start on each chord tone, start on the lowest one. You go up to, to the next chord tone and back down. That's it, but off, off each chord tone. So you go do da do da de do da 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 Okay, but if you just do it seamlessly together, in time, So that's step two to do that melodic pattern. Step three is to improvise just with chord tones only with pretty much constant notes. I'm changing the rhythm up a little bit, but I'm not stopping for like rhythmic, for phrasing. We're gonna do that next. So this is just to see how well do we know the, the chord tones. Can we just play and not stop? So I like to do, do quarter notes if you want, but I like to go with straight eighth notes. Can I just keep it going? And I'll slow it down to kind of experiment more and branch out. 
So this counts if I'm kind of like jumping around a bit. Okay, so just kind of that kind of an improvisation to just see the chord tone, the arpeggio shape so clearly where all the chord tones are. Now we're gonna try to improvise with just chord tones and try to do something that has some musical phrasing to it. So we're gonna have an idea, and then have a little bit of a, a break and then uh, another musical idea that kind of reacts to it or concludes it or something like that. If you're unsure how to do this, a great way to do it is to do like a measure and then rest a measure. So boom, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So you have kind of idea, space, idea, space. Repeat a lot of rhythmic ideas, repeat exact starting points of phrasings, uh, end on the root a lot, that kind of thing will help you feel like it's a cohesive uh, musical statement. Right, so I started with that idea. Roughly what I played. Um, so I just started there, went up, started the same way and ended on the root instead. So just some ideas for improvising with phrasing, but you can just try your best to do just now you're actually trying to use chord tones and sound in a way that sounds good to you. That can mean, that can mean anything. If I kind of sing along with the phrasing, that helps me personally feel a little more uh, musical if, if it's kind of a little bit connected to singing, so I like that. And then the final step for every time we're trying to work on playing over any chord type is to then add notes around the chord tones, okay? So if you want to think scale, if you know what a scale that works around it is, cool, but I don't want to, not going over that in this series, we're just, we're just saying, now that you know the chord tones, the, the quote unquote good notes, anything around them works. Because you can just always rest on a, on a solid chord tone. But just try each note. How does this sound to you? Okay, you can decide for yourself. There's not a right or wrong answer. It's like, do you like tomatoes or do you not like tomatoes? There's not a right or wrong answer to that, right? And that can change over time too. You could try that note. And then maybe, okay. You can switch rapidly between them. Notice how that's not, that's not too bad. Okay, so if I put this loop on here of this, uh, this is C half diminished, playing this voicing. Okay just voicings of C half diminished. Now I can just experiment with the sound. Every note can work. If you don't like a note, it's mostly because of where it was placed rhythmically. five steps we do on every chord form everything we want to improvise over and all five shapes of it so we're going to much more quickly go over the other five shapes uh, the other four of c half diminished okay here's the next shape of c half diminished just up and down with that root to root thing uh fingering here three one four three shift over to one and then have that be kind of the out of position note and then come back to three I think that's a nice way to do it rather than uh, four, three, two here. You can do that too. You can find your own ways as well. Okay, step two is that pattern. Okay, so I'm slowing down where I, it's like, if you need to process it more, slow down, speed up if you got it super down in certain spots, whatever you need. 
Okay, so that's that's step two. Step three is that, just improvise. Try to keep it going. Slower if you need to, chord tone, uh, quarter notes if you need to. Can you see the whole map all at once? So it's not a matter of going up and down it. Good, step four. Something musical. Okay, something musical for whatever that means to you. You want to just start to, can I make something I like from it? Chord tones only, definitely still. And now step five is adding non-chord tones, however you want to explore. Put that loop on again. And you get to taste everything. How do you like it? Right? And like I said, if you don't like a note, or if it doesn't, I shouldn't say if you don't like it, but if it doesn't feel like it works at all, it's more about where it was placed. If you don't like a food, maybe it's about, maybe it's how it was prepared, right? Maybe it's not the food itself. Anything can work, especially if you kind of alternate with a note that you know works. Get weird, try stuff. And when you need a rest, go back to chord tones and just do, do what you know how to do there. Okay. Okay, let's fly through the next positions here. Here's the next arpeggio shape. Okay, step one is just that root to root. I recommend reaching over with third finger here. Then you got third finger, pinky, tips of the fingers here. First finger, pinky, pinky, third finger, first. And then you're just in eighth position. Okay, pattern. other patterns too that's just at least one to do you could do you could work out other things uh, but at least one and at least that one I, that I recommend um, now we're just going to improvise constant notes this is step three I like to do straight sometimes just very straight eighth notes that 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 not swinging Make sure you just can really see the whole map. Now try to do something with phrasing. I might do that with my loop now. Notice with that idea. It had every did like did it sound like a cohesive kind of rhythmic idea not really until the end of it and then it was like oh now it all makes sense so you can always salvage something by by ending it with a period by ending it with kind of a conclusion and if in doubt just land on the root a conclusion to say oh yeah that was all on purpose and here's my kind of conclusion to that statement <laughs> Um, so that can uh, be something to do if you're not sure where you're going, then just give it some space and and in the phrase on a root. So okay, so now let's go ahead and add add our extra notes. J 
just playing around, right? Just at first, you're not even worried about it sounding good. And you'll find things that consistently sound good, like this is the root, this is the flat three, this is the flat five. That four consistently on this chord is always gonna sound good. You could almost consider it a chord tone. It's just gonna flow really nicely. It's not a chord tone. It's kind of like an extension, a, a chord tone kind of. But it's nice. It adds a whole flavor to it. Don't don't think of it as part of the arpeggio. Just it's a surrounding note. Okay, you get the idea. Let's move on with the next uh, arpeggio shape here. Here's the next one. Okay, this one is very awkward. First finger, fourth, fourth finger, re shift over to first finger and roll. Now you're in 11th position. Third finger, first finger, pinky. Okay, pinky, first, third, first, roll. Okay, and then use your pinky. This is that inchworm thing I've talked about in other videos. You're contracting your hand position and it expands out the other side. Okay, and then reach over with third finger. This is root to flat seven, okay? And then that's flat five and flat three. So this one's pretty awkward. Totally comfortable, you can totally get it comfortable. It's just awkward because it's, it's unusual and it's usually less familiar than the other ones. We want to have all five of these equally comfortable, all five of the shapes and positions, so, okay. In step two, the pattern, you always start at just lowest to highest and back. Don't worry about starting on the root for the pattern. I just wanted to hear that, but that's not part of the position. Um, okay, step three is your constant improv. Chord tones only. Just keep playing. Okay, once you can do that and you can see it really well, then you try to do something more musical with it and you kind of got it out of your system that playing constant notes, playing a ton of notes, and then you can use that when you want it to be a musical statement. Uh, but now you can just be very sparse and try to do something musical. Chord tones only still. You get the idea there. And lastly, we're gonna explore with all kinds of adding notes. There's that four that's always gonna sound good. Let's get some back backing track. get uncomfortable because you just tried some weird notes definitely try some weird notes just go back to chord tones okay last position nice and comfortable all on the 13th position here all in the same position no shifting so the fingering is obvious. Okay, everything is lined up with 13, 14, 15, 16 fret positions with those fingers. I like this one a lot. It's very kind of logical feeling to me. Uh, let's do the pattern. Go back to the root because I like to hear it there sometimes, but you don't have to. Step two, step three is just improvise. 
I'm doing all these on every every position, every form, every chord tone shape, every arpeggio shape. Because I don't want to tell you to do something and not demonstrate it for you. I know it makes these videos longer, but I don't care. I want to sit here and do it and show you so you can hear it and feel it. And it's just such an amazing feeling. It's so freeing to get this stuff down on, on any chord type you want to play over. So then in real music, you can, your hands kind of are ready and your mind is ready to do something you really feel good about when that chord type comes up. Okay, constant improv on chord tones. Then you try to do the melodic uh, phrasing, something. <laughs> I'm, I'm adding that four note, not on purpose. Sometimes I slide into notes and I don't consider that an extra note. Um, but it's just wonderful to, to do all those notes, kind of constant notes, and then go to the musical phrasing because what really sounds good in music, and, and that's subjective, of course, but what I think we can all agree is appealing is when somebody plays something really confidently and in a really relaxed way. And it's not about how many notes. More notes can be great, but it feels so good when someone plays something and you just feel like, wow, they know exactly what they're doing. They're so confident that they, they're just starting off with just a simple idea. Right? I feel comfortable doing that because I know so comfortably, so confidently where all those notes are. So I don't feel like I have to like practice reviewing them as part of my solo. And I say that because I have felt that. And so maybe you relate. Um, that, okay, my improvisation is coming up or I want a solo and I kind of feel like I have to just play all the notes because I am actually not so sure that I have them down. But if you're so sure, then you can really just play around with one note, two notes, three notes and make a beautiful musical statement. Okay, let's, let's hear something like that with this bag and trap. Okay, so then that fifth step is adding our, our extra note. <laughs> My loop is not perfectly in time. The loop pedal is hard to get that thing to happen. So I might just want to sit with a little spot. I liked what I was doing with the just the one chromatic note between flat seven and the root. Do, do, do. okay to do something and say Ooh, I'm never gonna do that again but that's okay because as soon as you're freaked out you know where your chord tones are so well you just go back to your chord tones Those are the five positions, the chord tone shapes, arpeggios, the five steps for, for how to really solidly and comfortably play over half diminished chord. Uh, great. There's more things you can do. Of course, you can think, you know, just specific scales and stuff like that. But the chord tones are so, so crucial. And I love just approaching it this way, because if you know the scales and not the chord tones, um, it's less helpful than knowing the chord tones and not the scales. And so then you can explore with all those notes around it. And really then you're playing in a more advanced way than knowing scales. Um, and you want to, you know, we want to work on scales too. I love that stuff. I just, you know, I can only put so much into one method and one series and one video at a time. But uh, I just, I, I think it's more advanced in a way to 
to explore those notes around the chord tones because then you're playing with all kinds of modes. You don't need to know the names of them or anything. You're just playing with sounds and you know where your home bass notes are. So that's the point of this approach. We're going to do more chord chord types in this series and, uh, and we're going through and covering chord types that are increasingly rare uh, and certainly used, especially in jazz music. But I started with the most common and we're getting to ones that are used uh, less often. So looking forward to more of this. Definitely download that free chord tone vocabulary pack shows all the arpeggio guitar shapes from this lesson and everything in this series, 12 different chord types, five positions of each chord type. Great resource to have. Just use the link in the top of the description. Hit that like button if you liked this lesson. I'm here every week with a new lesson. Next week, we are doing the minor six chord. That's gonna be interesting because the minor six chord structure is actually the same as half diminished, which we did today. But we definitely want to practice it separately because the root is in a different place. So it sounds different. It feels different. It's really flipped around. We want to think of it individually. So we'll talk more about that next week. Looking forward to that. Take care. Thanks for watching and happy practicing. Mm -hmm.